Yo, what's up? This is your boy Blue with Fatty Magazine. Guess where I'm at? Laguna Beach. We're about to head inside of the headquarters for Melon Brand. We're about to talk to the co-founder Brian McDonald about the high-end hat gear. I'm talking about classy headgear. Man, check it out. Woo! This is your boy Blue with Fatty Magazine here at the Melon headquarters with Brian McDonald, the, the founder of Melon, right? Yeah. Co-founder, co-founder, Corey Roth and I um, basically put Melon together over the last four years and just brought it to market this past holiday season. So tell us this, I know this is a hot, hot, hot gear right now that you have coming out right now, or you've been, it's been in the business for how long? I've uh, been in the business since I was 15 years old, so 15 years in the game. I've worked with a number of successful brands you guys would know. And this uh, melon is basically my first shot at my, doing my own brand. Always been a long time hat collector and a student of fashion. So this, here we go, you know. So, so I know you're, you're, you're telling me that you've been just a fashionable dude since you're growing up. So that's kind of inspire you to, to start this yeah, line, 100%, right? Yeah, 100%. I started uh, my first clothing company in high school, just messing around with some of my buddies. We did uh, a brand called Unauthorized and saw that you know you can flip those t-shirts for pretty cheap and uh, make a good profit so been interested in it ever since and went to college for it and um, worked for some chain retailers to learn kind of the consumer side and then the product side we have a lot of people over here helping us with that so i see the hats back in the back so tell us a little bit about these hats um so basically when we set out to build melon the entire concept was to create the world's highest end headwear and uh, we kind of took a lot of inspiration from Rolex and uh, Louis Vuitton and a lot of the designer labels Gucci, Fendi, Prada and basically source materials from all over the world. Uh, worked off some different fits and, and patterns to make our hats more comfortable than your average hat and uh, you'll see a lot of different elements. I can pull a Wow. This piece here, all hats that we make come in our uh, melon travel box and this box was inspired by kind of the history of headwear as was the brand and back in the old days when you would get a hat it would be custom made by a milliner and uh, just like you would get your suit from a tailor, you get your hat from a milliner, that's where we came up with the brand name Melon. So we want to... So maybe all the, for the, all the viewers and followers, yeah, they probably yeah. want to know what's a melon there. Can we explain? Yeah, basically in the 1500s, there were these custom hat makers in Milan, Italy. And as they started traveling around doing custom headwear across the world, they became known as milliners. And uh, that's who you would want to get with if you wanted a custom headwear piece made. So we kind of spun the word, shortened it, modernized it, and that's melon. So what? I know this is a hot, hot product right now. To we a great so. trend. We hope so. So what what makes this different from others in the, the, the competition, or do you guys even have competition? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of brands out there putting premium fabrics into their products and doing a good job at it. And we kind of feel like we're in a different ballpark, different lane. When we set out to make a hat, we build it from scratch. It comes off one of our three different fits, so off three different blocks that we use, and uh, the pieces themselves. We've sourced fabrics from all over the world and taken inspiration from the biggest designer brands as I was saying. So we get our cashmere out of Italy. Um, this hat's called the Statement. It's uh, one of our $450 pieces in our holiday 2013 collection and it's got real stingray fabric on the top of the visor here. We've got custom molded eyelets all the way around. Every melon hat has a silky pig suede under visor. And then we put our custom enamel seal underneath it so that when you take the hat on, off and on, your thumb doesn't have to, your dirty thumbs don't have to hit that, that suede. That's very clever. <laughs> then um, we always tie up custom matching damask woven labels. We built a uh, custom molded snap so you don't see that on any of the competition. And then the uh, lining inside every hat is a moisture wicking fabric. So as you sweat, this lining is designed to keep your sweat from penetrating to the exterior fabrics and giving you those nasty sweat stains. Mm -hmm. And then we have also got a little stash pocket inside of every hat. So we can keep your keys, your cash, whatever you want in there. So you're saying a, a stash pocket? Yeah, a stash pocket. 
Oh wow, so is there any specific kind of celebrities probably like that love this stash pocket that maybe you could maybe put on blast? I'm, I'm sure there's a few out there. I don't want to mention any names, but uh, each hack, it's uh, its own style name. This hat here is called the Statement. So you see that sewn into well, the lining? Well, obviously, this is a, it is a type of hat that would be a statement. It's a $450 hat, correct? Yeah, $450 hat, limited to 288 pieces. And uh, some of the guys that we've seen rocking the statement, I mean, it really ranges. Most recently, Kurt Sutter, the creator okay. of Sons of Anarchy. And, uh, you know, this hat, when the sunlight hits this visor, just like it does in the wild, it really glitters up. It's really dope looking. So you guys are going to have to take a shot of that. <laughs> All right, and I know, see, that hat, that one's like kind of framed. Is there a reason for this specific kind of... This is a hat we did with uh, Ballion Jewelers out of L.A. And uh, we wanted to step it up last season. This hat was called The Business. It's an all-black Napa leather hat. And we got with Eddie Ballion, and he basically blinged out a full logo for us. Got diamonds all the way around. It's 271 individual diamonds that make up, uh, what is it, almost two carats in this hat. And so we then replicated this with coil jewelers, and you can find that hat on display up at Tradition at the Beverly Center in uh, Beverly Hills. Yeah. Is there any um, celebrities are, that are wearing this type of hat at this moment? No, you know what? Um, you know, Birdman from Cash Money was a fan of the hat, and we're gonna be making a really neat piece for oh, him wow. in the future. But this this is just something that it's kind of one of a kind. Most of our hats are limited numbers, but there's only two of these in existence: one on display, and one's gonna go up for auction. So oh. we'll see how it goes, and then we'll donate the proceeds to charity. Well, that's nice, you guys. Yeah, you know. So tell us. I want to know, like you said, you you partnered up with Corey. Corey Roth. Roth? Yeah. How did that come about? Corey and I were buddies uh, in college back at Chico State University, and we'd always find ourselves hanging out as the nights would get later and everyone would be getting more and more drunk. Corey and I, the conversation kind of would always steer towards business, building our own company, doing our own thing one day. And we stayed in touch. After Chico, Corey went on to work for Ashworth Callaway Golf on the East Coast and just got more and more experience there. I ended up uh, at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising and learned a lot there and then worked for Split and Ambiguous on Body Glove and then um, had a really good run with uh, the brand Tap Out. Okay. And Corey joined me to help me uh, build the, the distribution for Tap Out and this was something I always had in the back of my mind was a premium hat and uh, we finally, when Tap Out sold, were able to devote a lot of time and energy into building this brand together and we rewrote the business plan 32 times it's it's definitely a business of passion here so i want to know i know you have a you have a team yeah we do team. so maybe can you walk us through here like 100 exactly? yeah okay. so some of the teams out today my partner corey this is his office up here in the in the front and uh that's where all the uh, sales are kind of monitored this is Rob Bushin, our operations manager. Uh, he's in trouble, he's not wearing a hat. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, Mark, our vice president of marketing over here. So and Mark? Uh, this is Kelly, VP of design, oversees pretty much all the product. This is like our war room where all the meetings go down and uh, goals are set, sales are tracked, production is tracked. And then we've got a sloppy lounge warehouse right now. <laughs> That's the way to describe it, right? <laughs> yeah. This is uh, typically where friends, family, you know, some of the celeb homies, whoever comes through, they kick it at the lounge back here, play Madden, whatever. And uh, it's a disaster. We just got back from the Agenda trade show. So. Well, not, not anybody just could come back here, right? This is a VIP, correct? Yeah, this is a VIP lounge. All sure. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. tell us, I know, so you, this is all made in the U.S., or, all the, or you have to go out of the country? The melon hats fabric sourced from all over the world and our factory is in southern China. We use a, uh, a Nike certified factory. It's one, actually one of the coolest places I've ever been. We went to 14 different manufacturers in the U.S. We wanted to have our hats made domestically originally. But uh, unfortunately the machining and the, the skills to run the machining necessary to get your hats on this level just doesn't exist in the states currently. So. We are very happy with our current partner that manufactures for us and uh, look forward to building a lot more through them. 
So before I wrap this up, Brian, I want to know like what's your goals um, this year because this is a new year. Melon will uh, basically increase our domestic retail distribution by um, working with only the top, top premium boutiques like we did last year. We're looking to expand into three new countries, which we're excited. We already started, kicked off this year with a big launch in Japan. And uh, basically going to continue to build in the Latin markets. We have a great partner based out of Puerto Rico right now. Okay. And um, looking to really push the limits on product. Our whole goal now is to really tighten up all, um, all of the company from product to distribution and streamline processes make the retailers love working with us you know we could be happy if the hats are selling but they got to be happy yeah. too so for the fans and followers that are watching this is there any kind of words of wisdom that you could pass on to maybe people that are looking up to you they're business people i think really it's um it's just when you set your mind to something stick with it and do it don't don't be discouraged by the haters it's it's very obvious when you look at the economy and, uh, and the world from kind of from the 10,000 foot view that there are very few people that have really stuck to their visions, stuck to their dreams and persevered through the tough times. And those are the guys and the girls that you typically find as more successful, wealthier, etc. because with your brain you can do anything, you know? For sure, probably growing up, you had a lot of haters, correct? Oh man, this this project has been so much fun to proving people wrong from the gate. And every single day, there's still people that change their mind. We had one of our my close family friends was always asking why the heck we were devoting so much time to melon and how the heck we thought we could ever sell a hat for 150 or 250 dollars and why someone would ever buy such a thing. And we would always explain, if you build something that's well enough made that you feel like a million bucks when you put it on, people will, will want to affiliate with that and become a part of that. And it, he actually ended up turning from completely against us to one of our investors and, and one of the backers in the company. I'm pretty sure that feels good, right? Yeah, that's the best vengeance you can ever ask for, you know? I was to, to tell, tell the viewers and fans, where can you where can find mailing? Um, basically all the major markets across the U.S. and select markets internationally. If you're in L.A., check out Melon at the Beverly Center at Tradition, Miami, Souls Inc. on Washington Ave, New York up in Soho. Check us out at Hat Club. But What about the website? Melonbrand.com. Definitely. Yeah. Well, can we get a Fat Ink Magazine shout out? Yeah, much love to Fat Ink Magazine. I really appreciate it. I love what you guys do. I was excited about this interview and stoked to be a part of the movement. Thank you so much, yeah. Brian. Thank you, guys. Cool. Yo, this is Melon McD at the Melon headquarters down in Laguna Hills, California, giving a huge shout-out to Fat Ink Magazine for coming through today. Much love.